A lot of us get frustrated with carrying the identity of being a Christian. We hate when people say, you're too holy. We hate when people say, oh, no, you're not going to understand this joke. We hate when people say, oh, shh, be quiet. This person is coming. Uh, change the subject. Well, we hate that. We hate, we hate when we stop getting invited to outings, even though we probably wouldn't have gone. And we, of course, hate when friends start to not hit us up all together, man. Sucks. And we don't know why this happens. You want to know why it happens? I mean, you know, you've heard the reason why it happens a million times. It's supposed to be the light that's in you and they don't they don't like your light. But before I get to that, we are going to get to that. That is a fact. That is true. That is scripture. That is biblically supported and all that. I'm going to get to that before the end of this episode. But the Bible says before you take the speck out of your brother's eye, take the log out of your own. And the reason why you can be lonely today and when you became a Christian and all these friends seem to have turned their back on you, one of the reasons why that can very well be happening is because you are a judgmental human being. We are going to take the log out of our eye before we try to take the speck out of anybody else's eye. That's how we're going to do this episode. Because I can't sit back and act like I have not seen many Christians. That'll be on, what was it, TikTok or, or what is it, Instagram or in person. That once they come to know Christ and they stop doing the things, you know, you know, a lot of people, when they come to know Christ at first, they're very, very excited, which is amazing. Right. But my, 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 my dad and my uncle will say zeal without knowledge is a very bad thing. You have this zeal, but you don't have that knowledge, that basic fundamental knowledge. And you start to think that I am saved because of my works. Because when you stop doing the things that you once did before, it starts to go to your head and you start to think that you are morally superior to everybody else. You start to forget that it is by grace that you are saved. I've seen it many times. You're very excited. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, my gosh. God delivered me from this sinful addiction, that sinful addiction. Everybody that's in this sinful addiction is because they're sinners and I'm not anymore. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight is a very humbling eight and nine is a very humbling passage. And I'm going to read it. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We are saved by grace through faith. That's what the word of God says. And it doesn't just stop there. It says that even the very faith that you have to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord is a gift from God. Hmm. No one can boast. No one can boast. Where is the room to boast? But sometimes when we first become Christians, when we first enter into this kingdom, this eternal kingdom and have eternal life, we, it gets to our heads and we think that the reason why everybody else doesn't have it is because I'm better than them. Because they're just sinners and oh, they're, just, they're just whatever. And we, and we start to even, we, we start to think that we are better and of more worth than them. When we lose sight of the fact that it is by grace that we are saved through faith and that faith comes from God. We start to think of ourselves as morally superior to other people. And the reason why you're lonely today is because your friends left you and your friends left you because nobody wants to be friends with a prideful jerk. I know. That sounds very harsh. But it's the truth. And the reason why I feel like I have to be harsh in my language to address this truth is because this truth is the difference between whether someone lives eternity in heaven with God or New Jerusalem and somebody alienating themselves from Christ and living in hell. Because Galatians chapter 5 verse 4 says this, you who are trying to, to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen from grace. There are many people, right, who became Christians back in these days, right? You know, talking about Bible days, I believe this is in Galatians, but I don't want to misquote. So I'm just going to say, it, you know, without rooting it in a specific place in Scripture. Um, but there are people, it's probably in Galatians 5, sorry. But there are people who became Christians, right? Um, and Apostle Paul was talking about how, you know, these people, you know, they started to say that, hey, we're circumcised and everybody else, these Gentiles are not circumcised. So before, you know, yeah, we're all Christian, but for you to be a real Christian, you need to be circumcised. And Apostle Paul, 
was very upset with this because these there are these group of people who thought that they're more justified they were justified for being circumcised while everyone else who wasn't circumcised even though they believe in jesus christ they're not actually saved because they haven't followed the law of the old covenant And what this highlighted was that these people thought that they were justified because of their circumcision. They thought that they were justified because they were following all the laws of Moses. And that completely misses the points of the fact that we need Jesus in order to be saved. So when we are tricked into thinking that it is by our righteousness and it is by our works that we are able to have a relationship with God and access eternal life, we are alienating ourselves from Christ. Because we're essentially saying that we don't need Jesus to get to God. We don't need Jesus to get to the Father. We just need our good works. And remember, I said we are not saved by our good works. We are saved unto our good works. Save, good works is evidence of, your save, of, of the fact that you are saved. It's not how you become saved. We start to develop an us versus them mentality. And we start to judge the people who, who are unbelievers in darkness. And we start to think to ourselves that we have this standing because we are righteous and they are not. Um, Poetry Jam. Um, one of the performers' name is Lucio. And he talked about this. And I'm going to give way to this clip to play. It's his piece. It's called Just Like Them. And I just had to add it on to this episode, so... For the next couple of minutes, listen to this. The poem is called Just Like Them. And I wrote this poem um, is at a place where I was being prideful. I was being fake. I was coming to church, and I had my saved hat on on Sundays and Fridays. But for the rest of the week, I, was, I had my unsaved hat on. And then I started living worldly. And yeah, just like them. I never thought I would end up just like them. You know, those people on the corner high out of their mind. And my prideful self disregarding that they're still part of this mankind, no. Instead of caring for them, I would condemn people just like them. I didn't know their names, so what they did is how they would be defined. Tweaker, druggy, addict. Always on the corner asking for money. What's funny is when I gave them food, they would refuse. Why well, give them money so they can misuse? God's grace is sufficient. I understand that. But those type of people that abuse the love of God, no, they won't make it to the pearling gates. As a matter of fact, people like them, hell awaits. And as I said that, I can feel my heart harden. Like the dead roses of a garden, I forgot how I was pardoned from my own wicked ways. My heart for the lost began to decrease and my pride began to increase. Every time I saw La Soul on the corner, I wouldn't even bother to say hello. I would put a border of disgust between me and them, which would stem from the root of my own insecurities. I forgot what God had done in my life. A pill-popping 13-year-old who was conformed by the patterns of this world, heading into a fate of an underworld called hell because I refused to dwell in the thought of a just God. Forgetting that at such a young age, I was just like them. Now I was on the corner talking to myself, never feeling the peer pressure towards myself. It was always something that I wanted to do. Stealing family medications to get high, I removed the morals my grandparents taught me as a boy, then implying the lie that this was normal. And I knew what I was doing would destroy me from the inside and out. But I loved the feeling. I was just like them. Not having a single ounce of hope, I got tired of my bondage with dope. And then, I, and one day I get saved. Lord, hey, thank you, hallelujah. But now my drug addiction is my hidden pleasure. After church on Fridays, I would go home to ease myself from all the stress. And I know James 5 says to confess your sins to one another, but what if my brother in Christ seems to be perfect? So I just played the part. I was doing good. I mean, I'm just chilling, minding my business, you know. Then one day, I took more than what I can handle. And I fell harder than a plane crash in a battle. I remember being in my room, staring at the ceiling, with the voices going on in my head. There was one distinct voice I remember telling me. I was just like them. 
And as I laid there feeling defeated, I learned that his power works best in my weakness and he gives strength to the powerless. I have empowerment to resist my vices. The heaviest of my conviction, I had to face reality. At 20 years old, I had a seven-year drug addiction. How can I not be just like them? That was a day I fully surrendered. I rendered from the pit I was in. I began to submit to what the Holy Spirit wanted to do in my life. I'm not a better person. No, God had a better purpose. I think the word said, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation is here. The old has passed and the new has begun. It was by faith alone, not of my works, that I am a son of God. So now I'm sitting here today. I'm standing here today. A living testimony that my three and a half years sobriety that I wanted for seven years is a representation that only God can do. So for the person that is reading this, there is a way out. You are pursued by a God that wants to call you his own. You are loved. That's it. So what happens is people run from the light because they think that, and this is what we communicate, is that they have to get right. They have to change their behavior. They have to, uh, you know what I'm saying? They have to 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 conquer all of their sin before they can come to the light that's what we communicate to them when we are judgmental and we make it seem that we are the ones that are justified by our works when we don't tell people about the grace of god they're going to run even further and faster from that light you know kendra did an episode where she was talking about secular music it was an amazing episode the most convicting episode i've ever had that I've ever uh, watched from Kendra. And there were a lot of people in the in the comments that were saying, I, I cannot do that. You know, I'm not, not in the YouTube comments, like on social media, and they're saying, I can't do that. No, nah, I can't do that. I just can't do it. And but that and that's the same mentality that a lot of our friends might have. When they see the light shine in us, they say, Oh, there's no way that I can do that. Oh, you don't drink? Oh, I can't do that. Oh, you don't smoke? Oh, I can't do that. Oh, you don't watch porn? Oh, I can't do that. And their mentality is in order for me to have that light is I have to do A, B, and C. I have to quit A, B, and C. But what they don't know and what we need to communicate to them is that it is by the grace of God that we are here today and we are able to be who we are. We are who we are by the grace of God. It's not the fact that we are the ones that just figured it out how to stop sinning. So now God loves us. No, it's the fact that God sent his only begotten son to free us from the bondage, free us from captivity of sin. Thank you.